We have a very awesome class today that I think is, is crucial. We're going to be teaching a lot of foundation so that you can pray into the immune system. Now, in doing that, we're covering so many millions of people just in our country alone. That this immune system covers such a multitude of issues. It covers you know, all cancers, any kind of cancer, whether it's leukemia, lymphoma, carcinoma, sarcoma, I mean, everything. It covers all the autoimmune diseases, of which there's over 80. I'll be going into some of this in more detail. It covers all infectious diseases. If you've got colds, flus, bladder infections, shingles, it doesn't matter. Immunity has to cover all of this, as well as allergies, food allergies, environmental allergies, asthma. So we're, we're talking huge number of illnesses. The prevention of anything that is immune related is just as important. Let's say right now you don't have these illnesses, but we want to make sure that you prevent it and you never get it. You never really know when these things are going to pop up. I'll be going into this in a lot more detail. For example, autoimmune diseases, you can have this as a child. In my own medical practice, I was treating kids with autoimmune diseases like eczema, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. You can see it in 20s and 30s. And it really skyrockets when people get above 40s and 50s. It's it just the numbers just go like this. So these are things that we see throughout life. Maybe you don't develop autoimmunity or cancer or any of these things until later years. And maybe you develop these things when you're young. Doing the kind of medical practice that I've done where I have done you know years of adult medicine but also pediatrics, I've seen these kind of issues in Everybody of every age, it doesn't matter if you're a little kid or you're a hundred year old person. This is very important work. So when we talk about the immune system, we're really talking about the foot soldiers of God. Um, God also gives us, of course, the, the absolute heavenly protection, but this is the protection that he gives us that is more at the physical level. The immune system has one major job. It's a complex system. It's a network created by God from cells, tissues, organs. Like everything else in the Lord, they work together. He gives us an immune system to defend us so that we don't get attacked by, and I say foreign in quotes, foreign invaders, because it's anything that comes in from the outside or even from the inside that can destroy our health and our wellness. One of the main things that the immune system does, as I mentioned here, is it recognizes the difference between self and non-self. So the self is anything that occurs naturally in the body that is meant to be there. That's your self. Your self consists of things like your heart. It's meant to be there. Your lungs is meant to be there. Your skin, your kidneys, your bladder, your liver, these are all things that are meant to be there. And as we know from the 139th Psalm, you know, God creates us in great detail. We have 37.2 trillion cells. That's how complicated we are. And at the time of our creation, he creates all the details that go into making up how those cells function, and that's our genetic code. That's our chromosome, our DNA, our RNA. That codes us physically. That's God's coding. It's the gift of the Lord. He creates at that time when we go from being concept of potential into the physical realm of you know, the natural realm, he creates ourselves, and that's where he creates all these different parts. That's where we get fingers and toes and, and kidneys and liver and eyes and all these things. We have so many functions and they're all created by God. And non-self, again, as I say here, is not naturally in the body and it is harmful. You have to remember the difference between self and non-self. Self is that which is created by God and it is healthy and it's how God creates it for all our functions, and then non-self is harmful. So these are the examples, as I mentioned earlier. So all kinds of things kind of fall into that non-self category. And that includes, as I say here, just the infectious, disease-causing organisms. We're talking about bacteria, viruses, parasites, fungi, candida. There's a ton of these things. And there's so many of each. It's just incredible. I mean, it's uncountable how many of these organisms there are that can cause illness. There's also cancerous cells that can cause tumors in the body. Or if they're blood cancers, they're, they're just literally causing abnormal, destructive multiplication of cells and tissue that don't allow our, our own self to work. Now, this is really the definition when we get down to it. Because you have substances that cause allergies 
mentioned asthma, and I mentioned a few pollen, grass, animal dander, foods. When we're testing for simple things like allergen, it's just this endless list of things that we're testing you for to see if you are showing an allergic reaction. Same thing with infectious organisms. There's so many different kinds of cancer. We have a lot of stuff we need protection from. That's why the immune system is so important. The immune system also can be faulty. Again, the enemy loves to bring in all of the things that attack us, and he also loves to attack the immune system itself, where your own immune system, as I say here, can mistake self for non-self. And then what do you do? You attack you. So you have an immune system that isn't attacking a bacteria or a cancer cell. It's attacking yourself. And that's what autoimmune diseases are. There's a lot of them. We have over 80 autoimmune diseases, and you all have heard of a lot of them. You've probably all heard of rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia eczema, celiac disease, the type 1 diabetes, Hashimoto's and Graves' disease are both diseases of the thyroid that are autoimmune. Millions of people have these things. Um, ankylosing spondylitis, I just had somebody come to ministry, that destroys your vertebrae, the bones of your spine. You can attack any part of your body through autoimmune disease. The way God makes us up is just incredibly complicated. But he does it in systems where everything can function according to a system, according to a chemical pathway, and types of body chemistry makeup that have its specific job. So he takes this huge mass of material, three billion different pieces of information code in your DNA alone. But he puts it in a systematic form that we can understand it, we can work with it, we can pray into it. And in the medical field, of course, we work with it according to a medical specialty. God creates within us an incredibly wonderful self, and he gives us protection against non-self. The major non-selves are your organisms that love to attack you, bacteria, viruses, fungus, infections, fungal infections, candida, parasites, tons of these things. More non-self is cancer. Even though this arises from your tissue, it's all based on genetic mutations where you don't properly code anymore for different tissues in your body. Virtually any part of your body can develop a cancer. They're all corruptions of what God creates at the cellular level because all of your organs are just collections of cells. And each and every organ has a job and is different from all the other organs. Your stomach's job is to digest protein and your liver's job is to detox chemicals that need to be eliminated and broken down in the body. Your kidney's job is to eliminate waste. So that's healthy tissue is made up of cells that do their job. What happens when the immune system gets attacked by the enemy, the whole system gets compromised where it starts starts attacking you as if your healthy kidneys or your healthy liver or your healthy lungs are foreign objects and need to be attacked and damaged. That's how that works. So it's not something we want our immune system to do. So let's go to the next part because I want to go over the structure of the immune system. We're going to just kind of work our way through the parts. The immune system's kind of core is really in the bones. It's the bone marrow. The bone marrow has important functions. It's a core part of the immune system. So as we all know, it's a soft, spongy tissue that's in the hollow center of our bones. It produces stem cells, white blood cells, red cells, and platelets. I mean, we are covering a huge amount of health creating issues from God. When we just look at these cells, we want everybody to have healthy bone marrow. Let's start with the white blood cells. I, I call them the foot soldiers, battling disease in the body. They really are. The white cells are incredibly important. And when people are lacking white cells, they, they have a lot of problem with immunity. And I've seen God do incredible healing miracles, even on people that are lacking white cells by disease or by birth. One of my favorite cases was one of the Down syndrome kids that I prayed for, who was actually growing out of being such a kid. He was a guy who was coming into his 20s. Not only did he have the, you know, the typical things that you have with that condition where he had a lot of learning problems because of the IQ being really low, but there's a lot of internal organ system issues that can occur with, with people of this condition. 
One of his problems was a very low white count. It was extremely low from the time he started being checked out by his doctors. And they told the mom over and over again, every time they check them out, they'd say, if your son gets a serious infection, he will die. And the mom would leave the doctor's office crying. Finally, the, the family called me in to start praying for him, and we just saw miracle after miracle, including increased learning. But one of the coolest things from the mom's point of view was she took him into the doctor, and for the first time in his whole life, he had a normal white count. So we need those white cells. We're going to go kind of cell by cell. We have five main types of the white cells. So the lymphocytes, again, you don't have to know all the details. You don't have to know all the rules in the medical terminology. But if you know the principles, you can already start praying into the Lord. For example, it's really important to know that your bone marrow makes white cells that fight pretty much everything. You have the lymphocytes, and I mentioned here, they identify and destroy foreign substances like virus, viruses and cancer cells. We have a couple of, of major ones that I wanted to share with you today. We have B lymphocytes to make antibodies, and these are proteins that actually fight the foreign substances that have been identified by your body, which are called antigens. So you have antigen, the foreign substance, which is then attacked by the antibodies, which we make as well, and the B lymphocytes are a part of that. The T lymphocytes, as I mentioned here, help to, to kill the antigens, the foreign substances of foreign organisms that shouldn't be there. And the natural killer cells are very helpful. They kill cancer cells and viruses. You'll see when you look at the white cells, they're kind of spread all across the board in terms of, of what they destroy. Different cells destroy different combinations of things. But they all work together, and they're incredibly powerful and beneficial when these are working. So when you pray for people, just remember that you want to pray for the person to have a normal count. Like that boy that I shared with you, he had a very subnormal count. And the mom was told, you know, he basically doesn't have a well-functioning immunity because he doesn't have enough of those cells to protect him. You don't want too high, you don't want too low. It's like everything else in the body. The functional word that I share over and over again in terms of how God created us is balance. Everything that the Lord does is creates balance. If you have too much of something or too little of something, you're out of balance and you're going to be sick. We see that with everything. It doesn't matter if it's white count. It doesn't matter if it's your red cells. You don't want too little. You don't want too much. You don't want too many inhibitory neurotransmitters. You don't want too few. You don't want too many excitatory. You don't want too few. Everything is balanced. God creates us in the most perfect, beautiful way. If we pray that balance, we are right with the Lord. We're working exactly the way He wants us to be. We want to be right in the middle with a peaceful mind, not a depressed mind. We want a joyful heart. We don't want to be having anxiety and panic attacks. We want everything balanced and in the middle. We don't want tight muscles. We don't want loose muscles that have no tone. We want to relax. We want to contract. That's the way God created us. I'm just giving some examples. That's how the word works. The neutrophils, and these are our most numerous of the white cells, and they kill and, and they just bacteria and fungi. The acidophils are a third kind that, again, everything's kind of spread out between these different cells. They attack and kill cancer cells, parasites, and they also help with allergic reactions. Want a good balance when you get tested for these things. The lab is kind of looking at everything at the right level. You don't like everything else in the body. You want just the perfect way that God created us. A happy lab test is a lab test where everything's in the normal range. Your basophils fight parasites, allergy reactions, and have a preventive component um, for preventing blood clotting. Finally, the monocytes break down and destroy bacteria, and they help cell-to-cell -cell communication. All of these different kinds spread over the whole function of immunity because they cover all the main categories that I mentioned earlier, whether it's cancer, whether it's various kinds of infectious disease, you know, viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasitic infections, and allergic reactions. And these are the foot soldiers. If we think of the, the army in our country, in our country it tends to be done by rank. You know, you have the privates and the corporals and the sergeants and the lieutenants, major captains, majors, colonels. 
So they're different ranks, but they're different categories. This is ranked more just by types and the way God created them to do their job. When you're healthy, every cell that you have is doing the job that God gave it to do. That's the main thing that we have to remember. Every part of us has a job, and this job is created by the Lord. What we want is every cell, every tissue, every organ to fulfill what God wants and to do what God created it to do. Just remember that the red cells bind with oxygen. They're part of your circulatory system. The circulatory system is incredibly important. We have our heart, the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. With the right side of the heart bringing the blood, which is now doesn't contain oxygen, it's deoxygenated blood that contains waste products that are going to be thrown into your circulation. And that is taken up into the right side of the heart and then moves into the lungs. In the lungs, we breathe in oxygen, which is the breath of life, right from the book of Genesis. And so we breathe in oxygen, which is very important for many reasons. And we breathe out waste products of metabolism like carbon dioxide. So we breathe in life, breathe out waste products. It's very important that we bring that back in the blood. It goes into the lungs. And then as we breathe in new oxygen, it goes into the various subsets of the lungs and into the circulatory system of the lungs and then moves into the heart. The left side of the heart pumps the blood, which is containing oxygen, out into all of the periphery of the body and feeds all of our tissues, organs, cells with oxygen, nutrients, red blood cells, and then we just go back in, you know, it's kind of a big circle. And the platelets that are made by the bone marrow are needed for clotting. If a person has very low platelets, they, they can have um, bleeding. It can be very dangerous. This is an endocrine gland, and it lies behind the breastbone. It's an important part of our immune system. The thymus is mostly active in childhood. By the time you're a teenager, a lot of the thymic gland has been replaced by like fatty tissue. It's not really very effective as we get older in terms of the gland being super active, super effective from the standpoint of immunity. It's not a dead gland. It's just less functional, less, less active. But it's still very important. The lymphocytes migrate from the bone marrow and return the thymus. It's one of the things that the thymus will do as its job. And so it's important to be aware of it. So bones here, all over the body, thymus here. Again, it's an endocrine gland that has an important role in the maturation of lymphocytes. And then the spleen is in the upper left abdomen, and it also helps the lymphocytes mature. It stores the white blood cells and the platelets, and it also destroys old red blood cells. We have our bones, we have our thymus, we have our spleen on the side and your left upper abdomen. So those are three of your main parts of your immunity. And then we want to talk for a moment about the lymphatic system. And I'm sure you've all heard of lymph. And it kind of mirrors our blood circulation. Blood circulation, our arteries and veins, big, huge arteries like the aorta, and then they get smaller, smaller, smaller. So we have little arterioles and we have capillaries. These, these things go from big to very little. In our circulatory system, we have arteries, we have veins, and the lymphatic system kind of mirrors it in that it's a circular, it's a second circulatory system that transports lymph, which is part of the immune system. It's a fluid that contains the infection-fighting white cells and moves them throughout the body. So it's another really important part of our immune system. And it's done, as I mentioned here, through a network of lymphatic vessels. The lymph fluid is filtered as it moves throughout the, the lymph system. We trap bacteria, virus viruses, waste products, toxins for elimination from the body. It's an important part of our system. So it's a fourth part of the immune system. Um, bacteria and viruses that are trapped within the system are then destroyed by the lymphocytes. We also have a fifth part, which I'm going to call a fifth part, which is what we call lymphoid tissue. This is found here in the linings of digestive tract, the airways, and the lungs. What you all are aware of, at least some of this, are the tonsils. These are active part of these tissues themselves. They're active parts of the immune system. For example, the appendix, which we have traditionally considered to be not very important, like we call it a vestigial organ, is something that doesn't have any function. And what we've learned about the appendix is it actually can promote the growth of 
probiotic-like good bacteria. So what we're learning is it, it might actually be a reservoir healthy bacteria and not all just useless and bad. So that's a good thing. And, and also this lymphoid tissue can help break down and destroy toxins, viruses, things like that. And sometimes, of course, the, they get infected themselves, like when the tonsils get infected and people end up with a tonsillectomy or removal tonsils. That's different because it's solid tissue rather than the circulatory system itself. If you don't have any of these things, we want to protect you from having it. For example, cancer is really common. It's next to heart disease. It's one of the most common diseases that exist. And people get different cancers at different ages, as I mentioned earlier. What we want to do is make sure that we have healthy, strong immune systems that from this day on keep you healthy. I'm, I'm as big on preventive medicine as I am on treatment of illness. I think one of the blessings that we can do in praying into illness is prevention as well. Let's say some of you are programmed in this room to have cancer, but you haven't developed it yet. You're going to develop it in three years or five years or 10 years or 20 years. It'd be wonderful to never have it. Nobody wants any of this stuff because we don't cure cancer. We, we manage it. That's where I've seen so many patients come with multiple primary tumors where they've had one cancer and you know, that seemingly is doing okay, and then a whole new cancer develops. And then a whole other one can develop. And same thing with autoimmune diseases. We do not cure them, we manage them. And it's a great thing that we can do that, but we'd like to have a miracle, which is only what God can do, and have it either never happen or have it disappear, and it's just gone. That's what the Lord does. Feel free to pray into that, by the way. I think that's a wonderful thing if you would like to pray into, as you pray into your immunity, pray to God that there's things here that you never have to have, and there's things here that you might want to be cured from. But God can do everything and anything. I want to just mention genetics for a short period of time. I usually, as you know, have been spending more time on genetics, mental illness, genetics and pain. The coding in our genetic material is really the way God creates us. And the enemy, of course, loves to do anything that the enemy can to cause mutations and disrupt it. And I usually will go into a lot more detail about how the enemy disrupts our health through the actual mutations. But in the field of immunity, we're dealing with so many different topics that I literally have to spend the whole time you know, we spend four hours doing nothing but talking about mutations and cancer mutations and autoimmune mutations and infectious diseases, mutations and allergies, mutations and asthma. It's just endless. It's just endless, endless, endless how broad based that is. So mostly, I just want to mention that genes affect the function of our immune system. And these mutations increase our susceptibility. They increase risk of all these different conditions. The mutations are so complex. For example, the field of pain issues, that seems to be a real common issue. It is in all the churches, by the way. When I go into church and I ask how many people have pain, I can see 80% of the hands go up. If you look at emotional and mental issues which cause pain, it's 100%. I've never met anybody in either being a doctor or being a, um, a minister in healing that hasn't had that in their life. So one little issue, the amount of mutations are uncountable. Migraine headache alone is linked to 30 different mutations just for pain, not anything else, just for the pain component. And I'll be coming back and I'll be dealing in a lot more detail with the specifics of things like cancers and autoimmune diseases, that sort of thing. But I did want to introduce this and make the point, and I'll just make one point, for example, with cancer. There is no cancer that exists without genetic mutations. It doesn't exist. It's just a commonality of of how that is created by the enemy. For example, everybody who has any kind of cancer has oncogenes, just converts a normal cell into a cancer cell. Two years ago, when we first created our healing ministry, we had doctors from many different fields and from all over the Bay Area. And our cancer specialists were, were both from Stanford, 
oncology department. Um, when we were doing the training, every one of them wanted the students to know what every single cancer genetically has in common. One of the oncologists is a research oncologist from Stanford who is super amazing guy. He wanted to make sure everybody knew that you pray for cancer, you got there's certain things that you have to pray for every single person who has this disease. Doesn't matter if it's a carcinoma, sarcoma, whatever it is. The immune system has three lines of defense against invaders. I went over earlier the different parts of the immune system. We have three lines of defense. And I want to go into this from that standpoint, which is the actual way that God has created the working of this defense system. It's, it's pretty amazing. The first is what we call physical and chemical barriers. This is your first line of defense. This is really good stuff to be aware of when you pray for the sick. You can pray for yourself, you can pray for others. And if you're sick, this is really good stuff to know, at least in principle. As I'm saying, if you don't want to know all the details at the beginning, start with the principle and then you can work in more and more detail with this. The first line of defense is, and that includes your skin, of course, because a lot of invasion can come in through the skin. The mucous membranes of our body, those are internal skin in a way, just from a functional standpoint, because we have mucous membranes that are part of a lot of different systems. For example, your digestive tract is lined with mucous membrane from your mouth all the way down to the elimination through the large intestine. So there's a lining that is there. We have smooth muscle, we have mucous membranes, we have lots of different parts that make up these systems. And the mucous membrane is really important. We have it lining throughout the digestive tract. Um, the bladder has a mucous membrane lining. A lot of people do get bladder infections, but if that lining breaks down, you can get another disease called interstitial cystitis, which is a non-bacterial illness, which feels like a bladder infection. You get the same kind of symptoms. You get pain, you get irritation, but it's non-bacterial. What it is, is a literally a breakdown of the, of the lining of the bladder. It's inflammation and irritation. And when people first develop this, they think they've got an infection. So that physical lining has been breached by the enemy. It's a really nasty disease because anything with a low pH, an acidic pH, uh, can cause irritation and pain. When you've got interstitial cystitis, it's a real bear to treat. The best research on this in integrative medicine where you're not using drugs, but using more natural healing, comes from UCLA Medical School, the Department of Urology at UCLA. They did some of the really good research where they learned by using diet and supplements, you could literally increase the pH and have more of a less acidic urine and more soothing to the lining of the bladder. So there's a lot that we can do to good lifestyle habits as well as prayer to the Lord. Your mouth is covered with, with a mucous membrane, the esophagus, you know, into the respiratory system. There's a lot of barrier, both internal barrier and external barrier. And when this is breached, illness invades and it can spread. So I really want to make the point that this is important to pray for. We want to have a nice, strong, physical, chemical barrier against illness. If this is breached, when you start looking at illness, that's how infections spread, that's how Cancer spreads. If, if Cancer is a very interesting disease because if you look at a normal cell and then you look at what happens at the cellular level, at a precancerous level, before you actually have the development of cancer, what we see is the development of abnormal cellular patterns that get abnormal and then more abnormal and then more abnormal until finally pushes through into cancer. And when you have cancer, the barriers are broken. All these physical chemical barriers because cancer is an invasive disease. So we go from hyperplasia to dysplasia to borderline cancer to the development of cancer itself where the cellular makeup is getting more and more abnormal, more and more irregular, more and more erratic. It's very interesting how the enemy works. It's just as important to pray out the precursor developments as it is the disease itself. You want to get the whole thing healed. So that's the first line of defense. Um, the next line is what we call nonspecific resistance. We have cells called phagocytes, which are cells that are near the physical barriers. As I say here, they engulf and destroy bacteria and other organisms 
that try to invade the body. Of your white cells, four of the five white cells actually have some of that capacity to actually engulf and destroy. That's one of the things that your white cells do, but most of them. The other thing that happens is part of this nonspecific resistance is that acute inflammation can form. And that causes, as I mentioned here, heat and redness, bringing more white cells. <laughs> inflammation is interesting because acute inflammation is a self-limited process. It's actually something that's really good. Not all inflammation is bad. Acute inflammation is something that helps to heal or there's an infection, a trauma, an injury scraping of the skin or, or you fall against, you know, you trip on a curb and you skin your knee. Wherever there's a breakdown of the healthy tissue, the healthy barrier, acute inflammation is a good thing. It's very self-limited. It usually only lasts a few days or a week and then it kind of disappears because the condition that is trying to help is often healed from within. Chronic inflammation is a different issue. That's where we see all kinds of health issues. For example, autoimmune disease. Um, the hallmark of autoimmune disease is inflammation. That's bad inflammation. <laughs> It's not the inflammation I mentioned here. We want to get rid of inflammation that's caused with autoimmune diseases. Again, that's where your own immune system is, is attacking and damaging your own healthy tissue. The hallmark of that is inflammation. Every one of these conditions are inflammatory. And it's chronic inflammation, which means it doesn't heal. But we'll give you, you know, drugs and things for it that are anti-inflammatory, but we are not curing you, we're not making it 100% go away from a standpoint of the inflammatory pattern that can develop in people with, say, autoimmune disease. You can go into remission and then often you relapse. So we never can claim cure, we contain and we treat. So the nonspecific resistance is very interesting. As I say, it's nonspecific. It's not specific to a particular illness. It's not specific to treat lung cancer or it's specific to treat Lyme disease. This is the number two level. This is the second level that God's created us with. Really important to have these things be strong and, and to know how to pray into this. The last one is specific resistance. This is your third line of defense. This third line of defense is where God literally programs our own immunity to go after issues, illnesses that the first two levels have not healed. It's gotten through the physical barrier, the nonspecific phagocytes, the acute inflammation hasn't done the job. So now we're at the third level, which is the heavy-duty level. This is the level where... As we mentioned here, antigens stimulate a major immune response on the part of your body to destroy the specific invader. It's not an infectious organism that just gets crunched at that second level. Now it's a serious problem, and it needs to be treated in that way. We want a very major immune response to be called upon in the part of your body so that we can destroy the invader, destroy the um, that which wants to do harm to you. So now we're calling out probably the generals, and the, if we did it by rank, five-star general are called, and the uh, all the generals and the colonels and you know, all the, the big military, the tanks, you know, the bombs, and all the, the rest of that stuff if we use a military kind of uh, example. And just to give you some examples, I mentioned here the, the T lymphocytes and the, and the B, B lymphocytes, they become activated because they're, again, created in the marrow, but then they get matured in the thymus. Thymus can get called upon. Maturation can occur in the spleen. There's a big, large process. Um, cytokines are chemicals that promote cell-to-cell -cell communication, and that's part of this whole immune process. We have interleukins, interference, growth factors. There's a lot of chemicals that get called upon really through God to create specific functions occurring from different cells. It's, again, it's a much more complicated process than the first two, the nonspecific and the physical barrier. Now it's getting very specific. For example, let's say you have a brain tumor, like a glioma, and the glioma can occur from three different cell types. If you're at this level, you're gonna be activating very specific immune responses to a specific cell, let's say it's an astrocytoma, that you wanna get destroyed. You're gonna be 
programming for that very specific type of cell versus other kinds of cells. So it gets very specific. That's why it's a much more complex kind of response on the part of the body. Antibodies are created to bind to specific antigens so they're part of it. Attack and neutralize, for example, the organisms. Let's say you want to get rid of Lyme disease, and it's been a real problem. Now, that's an interesting illness because it's, it's not an easy illness to work with. We tend to treat it once it's been diagnosed in the medical field with antibiotics. It can be very resistant to, to treatment. And a lot of people will either get hopeless, give up, feel like there's, there's just nothing going to happen. They might go to integrative medical doctor and end up on a bunch of IVs, a bunch of supplements. It can be a very slow, difficult process to cure. The wonderful thing with the Lord is that when you pray into God for the immunity, He can heal anything. And one of the cancer patients that I prayed for who had a magnificent healing from God has a brother with Lyme disease. And she wanted a proxy prayer, not for herself, but for him as well. Because his Lyme disease was crippling to him. He had had years of not even being able to work. He was disabled. Whenever she comes to me for prayer, she wanted prayer for herself. She wanted prayer for her brother. She came in on Thursday. She said her brother from the prayer had had a wonderful healing. She said he's back working again. For the first time in years, she said he's back doing an engineering job. And she said he's got energy back and he's joyful and he's happy. Kind of our fourth level is really God activating these three levels. There's the physicality of these things being healed, but the activator is the Lord, and He can create outcomes that just aren't possible. Another thing I want to mention is that you retain a memory of these invaders at this third level in case they attack again and need to be destroyed. I really like to pray that people don't get the evil ones coming back again. When I pray into the brain, which we're, we're not focusing on today, but when I pray into the neurons of the brain, because we have almost 100 billion neurons, and I'm always praying into God getting rid of all the bad, damaged, malprogrammed neurons. Because um, the neurons, like the genetic material, code us. They code us with information. There are two different systems that God created to code us. And when they are healed, you have a tremendous blessing of being very helpful for getting rid of illness, hugely helpful. Out of those 100 billion neurons, you've got great neurons that are coding you for good, positive things that you like, and then you have neurons that are malcoding you for illness. And I always like to pray out damaged neurons, and I like to pray in that God gives you replacements, nice, clean, fresh, healthy neurons. Sometimes you, you have to figure that he's replacing billions of these things with almost 100 billion neurons. Figure he might be giving you 30 billion new ones. He might be giving you 50 billion new neurons. Maybe you need a whole new brain. You get almost 100 billion new neurons. But that's what God can do. The other thing, just like retaining a memory, as I say here, of these invaders in case they attack again, what we want to do is not let anything attack you ever again. That's what we want to get you so built up. So in the brain, I always ask God to work against and not let re-attack occur from any kind of evil spirit that is going to invade you and reprogram you for illness. It's really important. I like praying into that. That's something that can occur at the brain level. And see, these things are working in complementarity. We have the, the memory of these invaders in case they attack again at the immune level, but God can seal up tunnels, cracks, crevices, anything that can allow invaders in, the evil spirits that we read about in the Bible. They came in, now they want seven friends to come in, then they're going to want seven more friends to come in. And what we want to do is have none of them come in. God can protect us on multiple levels. He can protect us through the neurons. He can protect us through the systems that allow in our brain uh, these things to come in. One of the things I love to share is that what God told me when I was first doing ministry in the hospitals is he said that the limbic system of the brain is one of the places that the evil attackers can come in. And we know that's true through the um, addiction issues that people have because the addiction centers in the limbic system of the brain. That's where people just get triggered and re-triggered and re 
triggered and he said a lot of this stuff can get it right through the limbic system. As we understand these things, we want to put up these barriers. And I just wanted to go a little bit back into these um, illnesses themselves, just with a little bit of information. When you pray for people, it's good to have some basic information at the top of your thoughts. Just remember, your immune system has been created by God to just crush illness. And I always like to make that point. For example, when there's cancer, the immune system is very weak. Literally, the disease evades the immune system, and the immune system doesn't have the capacity to just crush it, which is what it should do. Nobody should ever have cancer. Nobody should ever have precancer. Nobody should have the precursors. We are created by God to be healthy. God doesn't cause these things. You know, God, God is a blessing. God is good. The same thing, as I mentioned on the other side, when the immune system is too overstimulated, overactive, and you get the autoimmune diseases. These are really malfunctions that allow these things to occur in the first place. Just remember with infectious disease, these are diseases caused by organisms. It's, these are some basic things just keep in your mind when you're praying for people, you're praying for yourself. Now we're talking about the bacteria and the viruses and the funguses, parasites, candida. We have a lot of organisms that live in our body that don't cause illness. So that's one of the things why people take probiotics. And some of these probiotics are multiple strains. You're taking these things because you really want to have a nice, healthy immune system in your gut. But some of the strains that are used are also helpful for bladder infections and women for vaginal infections. These are things that are have been researched and placed in these products because they're beneficial. You always recognize that we have harmless and even healthful organisms in our body too. So when you're praying for the sick, just remember you want to pray the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. That's always what I keep coming back to. Balance, balance, balance. There's a lot of things that can trigger infectious disease. During times of stress, some organisms can cause disease. More than just stress, though, it can be things like a really unhealthy, toxic diet that can affect your immunity. Eating too much sugar, too much fast food, too much alcohol, these things can just wipe you out. So lack of exercise, sedentary lifestyle, or we're not getting the breath of life in. Just remember that our lifestyle and how we live and how we think predispose us to illness. They can literally trigger any single one of these illnesses where the immunity goes weak or the immunity goes dysfunctional. So we have to always remember that it's important to play our role with the Lord and to support his healing of us, which is always there. God wants you healed. There's nobody in this room that God doesn't want healed. If you haven't healed yet, it's not because God is against that or doesn't want it. I was giving an example in one of our little groups, and I was sharing the testimony of one of the patients that we prayed for at the other church that I actually showed slides here um, a few months ago, and that's Dan Culverwell. He's actually come to some of our other churches, and he'll actually get up. It's not, and he'll go to a church that isn't his, and, and he'll give testimony of God's healing. He's very open. He loves to share God's healing. This man's had close to 40 surgical procedures. He's been sick, living in pain for over 70 years. He was coming to one of our classes we're doing at his church, and all of a sudden, after decades and decades of being sick, God heals him. At the end, he stood up and testified to the whole church and said the only part of him that didn't feel good was where he had the stem cell shot in his knees. He said it's the only thing that had not heal. So God is just amazing, and he's here for all of us, and he doesn't cause illness. He wants you to be healed. So we need to support his good work. The more we work with him and we don't break down those things that he will give us as healing, we will maintain better. So I'm making that point here with infectious disease, but it's true with everything. Each infectious disease has its own specific signs and symptoms common to many infections. I mentioned these, fever, diarrhea, fatigue, muscle aches, coughing. Now, fatigue and muscle aches are important because pain is one of the most common reasons people 
come to see a doctor. Fatigue, that's another really common uh, reason why people will go seek medical help because they don't have energy. They're just exhausted, they're tired. They just say, I can't do my normal activities. And that's another real common thing that we see with in infectious diseases as well as all kinds of other things. So they have different mutations. They can be passed down through families. You can have genetic birth kind of mutations, or it can develop over a person's lifetime. Those are the acquired mutations. A lot of what we call the aging process, like people say, well, I'm not the way I used to be. I don't have the same energy. I don't have the same strength. This part of me isn't working anymore. That doesn't work. I don't find in doing this kind of work that that's God's purpose at all. We have examples in the Bible. Caleb, who when he's 40, he was 80, said, well, I'm like a 40-year-old. You know, Moses living to way past 100, ripe old age. There's so many examples of people in the Bible living to be strong and healthy at, at any age. What I see with doing this work is that that's really what our birthright is. We don't have to spend 50 years of our life being crippled, being sick, not able to function the way God wants us to. The true blessings of God is that we should be strong and healthy till it's our time to go. That's where I really don't believe in illness. I believe in doing this work as a doctor and as a, as a minister, that illness, as we know, is from the enemy, and it's just to keep you from the blessings of God. There's no other purpose to illness except to keep you from the love of God, the blessings of God, the guidance of God, the goodness of God. And that's the only reason to ever be sick. Other than that, God's blessing should keep you healthy till it's your time. And everybody could be different. I'm not saying everybody's meant to be 120, but what if you are meant to be 120? What if that's really what God wants? You should be riding bikes and being strong and healthy until it's your time. Every piece of DNA that you have in every one of your cells should be sparkling like a little gemstone from heaven, a perfect little diamond. When our material looks good, it looks beautiful, and it really looks well. Those parts of you that have no problems at all, where you have no illness, those are the parts that every little bit of you is healthy. Your genetics are healthy, your neurons are healthy, your endocrine system is healthy, the cells themselves structurally, functionally, chemically, are in good shape. And we should have every bit of us be that way. Just remember, I've mentioned this a couple times now, these are the five main categories of cancer based on the type of cell that they developed from. Just remember, because they're all healable, God can cure every one of these. And let's spend a minute on allergies. Unless you have really a severe allergy, like your kid with a peanut allergy that could literally take you down. A lot of them are your immune system reacts to foreign substances, allergens. It's usually more on the harmless side. You can get a lot of symptoms. It's not like having a heart attack or a stroke or something. And these can include, as I mentioned here, you know, dust mites, dander from cats, pollens, insects. Look at all those. Chicks, molds, foods, med medication. A lot of people have allergies to medication. These are just some examples. Just remember your immune system produces antibodies that identify a particular allergen as harmful for you. Really common kinds of symptoms are inflammation and then symptoms that affect your skin, your eyes, your sinuses, your airways, even your digestive system. I love praying against things like allergies, um, congestion, sinus congestion, or, or eczema. You've got you know, rashes on the skin. I've just seen such wonderful healings. And just know, again, like everything else, stress can trigger these things. Stress, bad diet, all these things work together. So God means for us to have a healthy lifestyle that isn't going to cause triggers of these, of these issues. Just some examples. Allergic conditions include allergic rhinitis or hay fever, asthma, food allergies, atopic dermatitis like eczema, hives, anaphylaxis, which you don't want to believe that's a medical emergency. That's that's really serious. But these are just examples of how the different ways these things can, can show up. As I showed on the slide before, you can have anything from a minor irritation to anaphylaxis, which is a life-threatening emergency. So people really differ in 
the severity of their allergies. You might have just a, a little bit of congestion based on some plants that are blooming at a particular time of year where it could be really serious. There's also an issue where people confuse food allergies with what we call food intolerance and food sensitivities. You have to be aware that they're not the same thing. And digestive problems are so common. I just wanted to mention this here. So if you have difficulty digesting particular food or a bunch of foods. It could be other issues. It could be lack of digestive enzyme production on the part of the pancreas, the exocrine pancreatic enzymes. It could be lack of, of enzyme production within the small intestine. It could be pH imbalances because the pancreas makes digestive fluids that are bicarbonate rich. They're very rich from the standpoint of being highly alkaline. The stomach is a highly acidic and environment. We digest protein in the stomach. The pH of the stomach varies from around 1.5, 1.8 to 2.8, maybe 3. We have hydrochloric acid as a stomach digestion, pepsin. So it helps to break down tough, hard to digest fibrous protein in the stomach. But then it passes through the pyloric valve, your foods, it goes into the small intestine. And we've immediately got to bring up the pH of the food there. If we don't bring up the pH of the food, you can end up with things that you think are food allergies because you can end up with pain, discomfort, um, inflammation, irritation to the mucosal membrane of the small intestine. It's very important that the system God set up is in place working well because you're passing very acidic food into the small intestine through the pyloric valve. How does God manage this? First of all, he creates bile in the liver, which then goes into the small intestine through the gallbladder. And the pH of bile is close to 8. It's just under 8. It's about 7.8 or even eight. Then we have the, in the asini of the, or sini of the pancreas, we produce the enzymes that are in an inactive form in the pancreas that will help us to digest our food, whether it's complex carbohydrates, fats, or protein. And then we have the creation of that very alkaline Digestive fluids, we make two and a half quarts a day of digestive fluids from the pancreas alone. So they're very alkaline. What's coming off the liver is alkaline. What's coming off the pancreas is a support for pushing the pH of acidic food up. So you don't get autoimmune diseases, all kinds of you know issues in the digestive tract that make you think you have food allergies. So I just want you to be aware that this is all very well put together and programmed by God. Digestion is meant to be a comfortable, well-operating process. That's why I made this point. If you have food intolerance or sensitivity, and you can't digest certain foods or whatever, it needs to be checked into further, and we should absolutely pray for it. Last one is just a little bit of top up on autoimmune disease. Just remember that your own immunity is attacking your body as foreign. So your immune system will attack healthy cells in your body by mistake with protein autoantibodies. These types of diseases can affect only one organ if that's how it's programmed, like type 1 diabetes is autoimmune or Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Graves' disease is autoimmune. Or it can affect many parts of the body like lupus. So there's no rules on this. The, you know, the enemy attacks and, and you can have one area affected or it could be many areas. Autoimmune diseases do tend to run in families and women have a higher risk for a number of the autoimmune diseases. These are seen more frequently in women than men and families. So it's something to be aware of. There are over 80 autoimmune diseases. Many of them have similar symptoms to one another related to the inflammation. We have no medical cure for autoimmune disease. We have relapses, remissions, and we're really just there trying to help the person deal with symptoms, you know, go into a remission state, but we don't have any cures. So all these things I mentioned today, we have one cure, the true cure, and that is God.